afflicted. No more amazement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day! No harm! I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. So, lie there, my heart. Wipe thou thine eyes, have comfort. The direful spectacle of the wrath, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have, with such provision in my heart, so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as an hair, be tied to any creature in the vessel which thou heardest cry, which thou sawest sit. Sit down, and be attentive. Canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then thou wast not out three years old. Certainly, sir, I can. Tis far off and rather like a dream. Had I not four or five women once that tended me? Thou hadst, and more, Miranda, twelve years since thy father was the Duke of Milan and a prince of power. Sir, are not you my father? Thy mother was a piece of virtue, and she said thou wast my daughter, and thy father was Duke of Milan, and his only heir and princess, no worse issue. Oh, the heavens! What foul play had we that we came from thence? My brother and thy uncle called Antonio, I pray thee, mark me that a brother should be so perfidious, he whom, next thyself, of all the world I love. The government I cast upon my brother, and to my state, for a stranger being transported and wrapped in secret studies, or thy false uncle, Dost thou attend me? Uh, sir, most heedfully. My false brother, awakened in evil nature, he did believe he was indeed the duke out of the substitution. Dost thou hear? Your tale, sir, would cure deafness. He thinks me now incapable, confederates with the queen of Naples to give her annual tribute, do her homage, subject his coronet to her crown, and bend my dukedom. Yet, unbound to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! This queen of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that she should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair melon with all the others on my brother. Whereon? A treacherous army levy, one midnight, faint into the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy prime self. Wherefore did they not that hour destroy us? Dear, fate us not. So dear the love my people bore me, they hurried us aboard a rock carcass of a butt, not ribbed, nor tackle, sail, nor mast, the very rats instinctively have quit it. Alas, what trouble was I meant to you? Oh, a cherubim thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile, infuse it with a fortitude from heaven, which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. Came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had, and some water that a fresh Neapolitan Gonzala, out of her charity, did give us, with rich garments, linens, stuffs, and necessaries. Knowing I loved my books, she furnished me from mine own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. 
would I might but ever see that lady. And now I pray you, sir, for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea storm. By accident, most strange, bountiful fortune, now, my dear lady, hath mine enemies brought to this shore. Here. Cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness and give it way. I know thou canst not Come away, servant. Come. I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel. Come. Thee. 
into a cloven pine, within which writ imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there. Thou best knowest what a torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his nothing and trails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spriting gently. Do so. And after two days, I will discharge thee. like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Fine apparition, my quaint Ariel, hark in thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Thanks. 
succeed. Hence, fetch us in fuel, shrubbest thou. Malice, if thou neglects or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll wrap thee with old cramps. Fill all thy bones with aches. Make thee roar that beasts should tremble at thy din. No, pray thee. I must obey. His art is of such power. So, slave. Hence.
but he does remember my drowned mother. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eye advance and say what thou seest beyond. What is it? A spirit? No, child. It eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the rack. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess, on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe, my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island, that you will some good instruction give, how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder, if you be maid or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens, I am the best of them that speak this speech, where I, but uh, where this spoken. How? The best. What wert thou if the queen of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. She does hear me, and as she does, I weep. Myself, I'm Naples, who with mine eyes never since at ever beheld the queen, my mother, racked. Alack, for mercy. Yes, faith in all her lords. At the first sight they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. A word, good. Sir, I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I signed for. This swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. One word more, I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me, the Lord, on it. No, as I am a man. There is nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. Follow me. Speak not you for him, he's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together, see what shalt thou drink. Follow. Oh. oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he is gentle and not fearful. What? I said. My foot? My tutor? Put thy sword up, traitor, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Seize you, father. Hence, hang not on my garments. Silence! One word more shall make me chide thee, if not hate thee. Hush! Thou thinkest there is no more sh such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. Foolish child, to the most of men this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections, then, are most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Be of comfort. My father is of a better nature, sir, than he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Come, follow. Speak not for him.
that I am lost. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation, few and millions can speak like us. Pretty peace. <laughs> she receives comfort like cold porridge. Here is everything advantageous to life. So true. Save means to live. Oh, that there's none or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. You cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. My son is lost. O oh, thou of mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Ma'am, he may live. I saw him keep the surges under him and ride upon their backs. I not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. It is. I wish mine eyes would with themselves shut up my thoughts. Who's 
the next heir of Naples? Mm -hmm. Say this were death that now hath seized them. Why, they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as she that sleeps. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep were this for your advancement. Do you understand me? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. <laughs> True. And look how well my garments sit upon me. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience? Aye, sir. Where lies that? Here lies your sister. No better than the earth she lies upon. If she were that which now she's like, that's dead. <laughs> Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. As thou knockst Miller, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. What stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest? And I, the queen, shall love thee. <laughs> Draw together. And when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall it on Gonzalo? Ugh. <sighs> 
fish. He smells like a fish, a very ancient and fish-like smell. Legs like a man, and his fins like arms. Warm on the trough, I do now that loose my opinion. Hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that has lately suffered by the thunderbolt. Alas, the storm is coming in. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabout. Misery quaints one with the strange bedfellows. I will shroud here till the dregs of the storm be passed.
this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I fear him, a very weak monster. I'll show thee every further inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot. I prithee be my god. Come on, then, down and swear. I'll show thee the best springs, and pluck thee berries. I'll fish for thee, and give thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrants that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks, but follow me, thou wondrous woman. <laughs> a most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard. Lead the way without any more talking. Trinkula, <clears throat> the queen and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Farewell, master. Farewell, farewell, farewell. 
lighting had burnt up those logs that you were enjoying to pile. Pray it set it down and rest you. My father is hard at study. Pray now rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. Oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge. What must I strive to do? If you'll sit down, I'll wear your locks the while. No, precious creature. I would rather crack my seams, break my back, than you such dishonor undergo, while I sit lazy by. You look wearily. No, little mistress. This fresh morning with me, when you are by at night, I do beseech you, chiefly that I may set into my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I broke your house to say so. Admired Miranda, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. Though I do not know, nor have I seen more that I may call men than you, good friend, and my dear father, I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like it. But I prattle something too wildly, and my father's precepts I dare think you forget. I am, in my condition, a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did, my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me a slave to it. And for your sake, I am this patient, long man. Do you love me? Oh heaven, oh earth, bear witness to this sound. I, young, all living in the world, do love, promise, honor. I am a fool to weep at that I'm glad of. Wherefore weep you? I find unworthiness that dare not offer what I desire to give. I am your wife, if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow, you may deny me, but I will be your servant, whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, I thus humble ever. My husband, then. I, with a heart as willing, as bondage heir of freedom, here is my hand. And mine, with my heart in it. And now, farewell, till half an hour hence.
serve her. She is not valiant. Thou lies, most ignorant monster. Wilt thou tell a monstrous lie, being but half a fish and half a monster? Blow, how she mocks me. Wilt thou let her, my lady? Trinculum, keep a good tongue in your head. If you prove a mutineer, the next tree. The poor monster is my subject, and he shall not suffer in dignity. I thank my noble lady. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Very will I. Kneel and repeat it. I will stand, and so shall Trinkula. <clears throat> As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest! Thou liest! Thou jesting monkey, thou! I would my valiant master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Trinkula, if you trouble him any more than tail, by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing. Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, thou shalt be lady of it. And I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayest knock a nail into his head. Thou liest! Thou canst not! What a pie ninny! thy greatness. Give her blows and take the bottle from her. Why? What did I? I did nothing. Uh, well, further off, didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Oh, do I so? Take thou that. As you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie. Out of your wits and humor too? A punch on your bottle, and the devil take your fingers. <laughs> now, forward with your tail. Uh, pretty, stand further off.
He is drowned whom thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. I am right glad that she's so out of hope. Do not for one repulse forgo the purpose that you resolve to effect. The next advantage will we take thoroughly. Let it be tonight. Before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy rites be 
ministered, no sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow. But barren hate, sour eyed disdain, and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so lowly. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, the strongest suggestion shall never melt my honor into lust. You do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. 
Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant, faded leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. If you be pleased, Retire into my cell and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mouth. We wish your peace. Oh, 
prisoners, sir. The queen, her sister, and your brother abide, all three distracted. But chiefly her do you term, sir, the good lady Gonzalo? Her tears run down her face like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou, which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, be kindlier moved than thou art? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the soul drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir.
grace of lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck her highness's frown upon you and justify you traitors. The devil speaks in him! No! For you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest faults, all of them. If thou beest Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, whom three hours since were wrapped upon this shore where I have lost my dear son, Ferdinand. I am woe for it, ma'am, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. Know for certain that I am Prospero. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects, none abroad. Pray you, look in. Sweet lord, you play me false. No, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for us, for our kingdoms, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. Don't the seas threaten me? We are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Now all the blessings of a glad mother compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder! How many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is! Oh, brave new world that has such people in it! Tis new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Ma'am, she is mortal, but by mortal in providence, she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my mother for her advice, nor thought I had one. Give me your hands. Be it so. Amen. Ah, 
the best news is that we have safely found our queen and company. The next, our ship. It's tight and yard and bravely rigged as, as when we first went out to sea. Go to. Away. My aerial, check. To the elements, be free, and fare thou well. Let your 